Today, I'm gonna to give you a little mini training on how to create an authentic and unforgettable culture for your restaurant, which will help you reduce turnover, but more important, it's gonna generate an energy among your employees and your guests that will create an environment everyone wants to be a part of. Oh yeah, by the way, how you doing? Dave Allred, The Real Barman here from barpatrol.net and therealbarman.com. So let's talk, no big whoop, all right? In an industry that leads all industries in employee turnover rate, how do we as owners create or build an environment that keeps employees happy long enough not to walk out the door and leave you hanging? All right, because here's the most difficult, difficult part when we talk about this idea of culture, and that is that it's lost its meaning. Like if you go online right now, which is probably what you're doing when you found me, right? You're looking online. But if you look at a number of blog posts, you'll see that a restaurant culture includes these important metrics. It's like vision, values, norms, systems, symbols, language, assumptions, beliefs, mission, habits. I don't know. Did I get it all? I mean, what are you supposed to do with that? All right, let me read you a paragraph from a website blog on how to build a strong restaurant culture. Let me find it here for a second. Here we go. The first step is to define the culture. What now, work out what your core values are. These are the values that you are looking for in a job applicant, what you want to encourage in your team and to show your customers. Great values can make a big difference to the customer experience by making it similar each time and replicable, by having people who share those values delivering the experience. All right, I mean, I don't know. Does that actually say anything? Did we learn anything there? Work out what your core values are? How? Do you feel like with that bit of advice, you're ready to build a strong restaurant culture? I mean, advice like this is so ambiguous and open-ended. I mean, it makes you want to stab yourself in the neck with a fork. And I know that sounds kind of morbid, but this same advice is plastered all over the internet. So what happens the majority of the time is what gets written down is just something that sounds good on paper. I mean, what about a mission statement? Should you create a mission statement? I don't know. I mean, the short answer is yes, as long as it's sincere and authentic and it truly captures the heart of the business as a living, breathing entity. And as long as actually uh, everyone actually believes in the words on the paper. All right, what I don't want you to do is to Google mission statement ideas and then create a rehearsed, watered down version that sounds good when you read it. Here at Dave's Bar and Grill, we believe in honesty and integrity and in providing high quality food and cocktails as well as fantastic customer service to our guests. And then you place it on a poster and you put it on the wall. There. Culture. Done. Check it off. All right, in other words, you can't just write down or tell people what you believe in. As a leader, you have to live it. And if you can't live it and lead by example, then you shouldn't lead this part of the business. Okay? That's, that's my rant on culture. All right, so in this video, I'm going to give you five key strategies that are going to help you build a highly effective and genuine culture that will reveal itself in the form of an extremely happy staff and very few empty chairs in the restaurant. In other words, we're going to pack it out. All right, because the guests can feel that culture. You know, that's why they come, for the experience. Food and drink, yeah, that's fine. You have to have good food and drink, but their number one reason for the ex is for the experience. And when you have a staff that believes in and lives the positive culture you've created, the staff provides an elevated experience that can be felt. People can't put, even put their finger on it. They're like, why do I love this place so much? Or you'll hear, hear people say, man, that place is packed all the time. What is it? And I'll tell you what it is. It feels great to be there. The energy is contagious. That's what you want to create with your culture. Contagious, positive energy. Okay, so let's get to these five key strategies. And I want these strategies to feel as concrete as possible because, like I said, most advice in this area sort of leaves you hanging all right, when it comes to knowing where to start with this. And I think a great place to start when it comes to evaluating culture is to look at a place like Google. All right, not Google online, but the actual building where they employ people. All right, Google is sort of famous for their innovative you know, culture and workspace they've created you know, with their nap pods, the online fitness, fitness centers and ping pong and foosball tables, video games, giant slides that let you slide down. But the one thing that you take from what Google has created is that people take pride in working there. You know, part of it's the brand name itself, and part of it is that it's fun to work there, and part of it is, you know, they feel like what they're doing is important work with technology and making a difference. All right, so when looking at these five strategies we're about to cover, always ask yourself if the strategy you're about to implement will make your staff feel like their work is important and like they, they're making a difference. All right, because if you can get them to feel like that, they will identify with their work in a way that becomes tattooed in their core values, which makes a powerful connection with the place they work, which means they will go out and do their best to do a great job, and they're more unlikely to leave anytime soon. 
Okay, so off we go to strategy one. And that is make your employees feel like the most important people on the planet. Well, what does that mean exactly? It means you treat them like a person instead of an employee. It means you make them feel appreciated for what they do. Okay, so how do we do that? Something more concrete. Well, first, you need to get to know something about them on a personal level. All right, create a bond that makes them feel important. That means learning about their family. Do they have pets? What do they like to do for fun? Do they have a boyfriend or girlfriend? Do they go to college? All right, you don't need to dive into the like deepest, most personal parts of their life. And in fact, it's probably not a good idea if you do that. But you want them to know that they matter beyond being a cog in your machine. All right, next, make sure that you're complimenting them and thanking them for the hard work and letting them know that they're valued. You know, ask their opinions, ask for their feedback. When you have a staff meeting, ask them to participate in the formation of ideas for shaping the business. Hey, we need some new promo ideas or we need a new cocktail menu. All right, you guys have any ideas? Let's brainstorm and write them down. In other words, be the boss still, but allow the lines of hierarchy to fade enough so that everyone feels like they belong on the team and not a military with a chain of command. And the old, you know, you'll do it this way because I said so. Okay, does that make sense? Make them feel important. Make them feel heard. All right, let's go on to number two. Number two is allow your staff to be themselves. Now, I love systemization. Businesses that systemize from top to bottom are far more successful than those that don't. But that doesn't mean that you turn your employees into robots and give them a script on what to say to the guests. You know, hello, and welcome to Red Lobster. My name is Dave, and I will be taking care of you today. Would you like to start with our bacon-wrapped shrimp? garlic cheese bread, or perhaps a prickly pear margarita with Grand Marnier floater? All right, right? You've been there, and you've heard servers that do that. And I understand the strategy. I understand the power of suggestion, and that by naming dishes and cocktails that it's supposed to influence the guests to order something right away. But when presented in a rehearsed manner, it comes at the sacrifice of personality. Okay? Allow your employees to have a spontaneous conversation with the guests. In addition, you need to do what's best for your business and the theme and the restaurant. I get all that, but I love a casual dress code. Not a sloppy dress code. Don't be mistaken. They need to be neat and clean, but I'll tell you this right now. Employees hate, and I'm speaking this word in all caps and underline, they hate uniforms. And I understand if your place needs a uniform to complete the theme, that's fine. I'm just telling you that when it comes to culture, you are sacrificing the pride of your staff Will, I'm sorry, you're, you're sacrificing the pride that your staff's going to have working there, which weakens your overall culture. All right, like years ago, like 25 years ago, I worked at a claim jumper, and I had to wear this like long black apron and a bolo tie and a gold star badge with my name on it, and I hated it more than anything. I felt like a character dressed up for like a kid's birthday party or something. I felt small and embarrassed and goofy, and I had very little pride in telling people I worked there. So just a thought, you know, allow your staff to feel pride by allowing them to be themselves in a way that lets them express their identity. Okay, moving on to number three, and that's piggybacking off of number one, and that is make the guests feel like the most important people on the planet. So how do we do this? Well, the first one is the easiest one of all. Learn their names, and the next time they come in, call them by name. Hey, Bill, great to see you again. All right, there's no sweeter sound in the universe than our own names. All right, so start with that. You will see your guests light up and they'll puff out their chest and they'll be like, did y'all see that? Right? I'm important here. All right, so what else? Well, here's a little secret that isn't so secret. People love to talk about themselves. And I can't tell you how many times I've been in a conversation with someone and after a while I'll say, man, you are so interesting and fun to talk to. I don't know what it is. Well, the truth is I'm not that interesting. All right, I simply asked them questions and they talked about themselves the whole time. That's joy for them, and it makes it seem like I'm interesting and fun because they're having such a great time talking about themselves. So you need to train and instill this skill into your employees. All right, make the guests feel like they're the most important people on the planet. How do you do this? Well, I just told you. Get them talking about themselves, and that means ask questions. All right, I like to provide a list of questions to the staff to give them ideas on things they can ask. Hey, where do you guys live? You know, Is this your first time here? Oh, you've been here before. Great. I'm Dave. What are your names? Hey, do you have kids? Oh, these are your kids right here. How old are your kids? Do they play sports? Oh my gosh, tell me about that. You got it? Does that make sense? Oh, and speaking of sports, look, I'm telling you right now, if you want a 50% tip, 
A 50% tip. Allow your guests to tell you about how awesome their kids are in sports. They will practically explode from giddiness. All right, and I know that sometimes you might be too busy to have a full conversation with the guests, but you can sprinkle these questions in throughout their stay. And believe me, there are a boatload more questions you can add to this list to get the guests talking about themselves. I'm telling you, they will walk out that front door after the meal and they'll be like, that was one of the best meals I've ever had. All right, because their experience was elevated. So teach your staff to ask questions and simply listen with a smile. Make them feel appreciated and important for coming in. We got that? Okay, let's move on to number four. Number four is make it fun to work there. And we talked a little bit about this with Google. They have built an environment that almost makes it so you don't even want to go home. All right, with that said, you can't really have like a ping pong table in the middle of the dining room or a dodgeball room, but you can still do other things to make it fun. All right, for instance, you can plan to take them on trips to visit breweries and distilleries to educate them on the process and the different brands. Of course, you can't take the entire staff all at once because someone has to be at the restaurant to run the restaurant. But, you know, do the tours on two separate days or maybe there's a handful of people that don't care if they go or not. All right, another great idea is gamification or contests. Contests not only drive sales for you, but it gets the blood pumping and it's fun for the staff to try and win a prize. And at staff meetings, you know, bring donuts and bagels. Maybe even a game like a trivia game about the menu or products or something behind the bar. All right, break the staff into teams, make it a trivia game about your restaurant, and whatever team gets the most questions right, wins a prize. All right, what else? I don't know, celebrate birthdays. You know, have an employee Christmas party. Hand out random gift cards and prizes spontaneously when someone does something simple, like, you know, they grab a broom and sweep up a messy space on the floor, or they clean something they weren't even asked to clean. You know, this is going to keep them on their toes and always looking to be a team player. Are you getting a sense of how making it fun can really pump energy into your staff and culture? All right, I hope so. With that said, let's move on to the last one, number five, which is raise and enforce the standards you create. Now, I know this one doesn't sound like it aligns too much with culture, but I promise you that it does. And not only does it align, but this might be the most important one. All right, let's start off with the first part, which is to raise your standards. And I want you to think about Disneyland when we, when we think about this. And if you've been to Disneyland, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, you're missing out on one of the most well-oiled machine businesses you have ever seen. All right, when you walk through the streets of Disneyland, everything is immaculate. All right, there's no trash on the ground. The little fake houses are perfectly painted, right? There's no cobwebs on the window shutters. There are no broken pieces of scenery anywhere. The Disney characters are walking and skipping through the little village. They're engaging with all the kids. The Disney standard is so high that just to be inside the park feels magical, which is, of course, exactly what Disney's going for. All right, When you raise the standards in your restaurant the same way that Disney does, you will feel the difference. All right, More importantly, your guests will feel the difference. All right, When you make it important to keep your place immaculate, and have the perfect side garnishes on your dishes and your cocktails, and you have the staff or the characters, you know, trained to provide a magical experience for the guests, it becomes contagious to everyone, the staff included. All right, and a pride takes hold. And there's nothing more powerful than pride when it comes to building a foundation of culture. All right, that's step one for standards. So you need to sit down and write down everything that's important when it comes to creating this Disneyland of restaurant culture inside your restaurant. Write them out. Then build a training strategy on how to instill this into your entire staff. And then keep it going strong. All right? You need to have pre-shift meetings every day. Talk about the food specials. Remind them to have fun with the guests, to be themselves. To do anything and everything in their power to get the guests to come back again. You can also acknowledge someone in the pre-shift meeting. Maybe they, they gave great service. All right? Make them feel special in front of everyone. I go over this in greater depths in the Restaurant Management Masterclass. We talk all about this. Culture. Bring the energy. Keep talking about it and educating them on it. Got it? Okay, now on to step two of this process, and that's to enforce these standards, right? Disneyland didn't make a list of standards for Disneyland and then just say, all right, here's what we're going to do, and then everyone just carried it out without any hip hiccups. All right, no, there were corrections that needed to be made along the way. Your staff will try to get away with what they can. They will test the level of laziness they can get away with, and when you or your managers don't say anything to correct their behavior the standards and the culture drops a level. And then they will test you further to see what else they can get away with, and so on and so forth. But you aren't going to let that happen, right? 
All right, you're going to remain the Disneyland of restaurants by following up with checklists to make sure everything's getting done correctly every single day. All right, so when you walk into the restaurant in the morning and the ketchup bottles are messy and the coffee pots haven't been cleaned, you're going to check who had that side work the night before and you're going to call them in and have a conversation with them. All right, and when they start to apologize and make an excuse, stop them right there and say, hey, I don't care that it didn't get done. I only care that it doesn't happen again. And then you look right at them and you say these magical words. Can I count on you to do your side work and the work that's expected of you? And they will, of course, say yes. And then you look at them and you hold their gaze for about three more seconds to let it really sink in. And so they start to squirm just a little bit. And then you say, great, thank you. And that's all that's needed. And they know that you're serious about keeping the standards and expectations high. All right, and also the last thing, let me say this. Here's the thing. I know it seems like you and your managers have to be hard asses to carry this out, but in order for your staff to feel confident and secure about the place that they're working, they need to believe that the person or persons leading them is competent and has everything under control. Those high standards you're enforcing make them believe in you. And I think I talk about this in another video on leadership. Your employees, just like children, need boundaries and rules, and they need the rules to be enforced. Now, if you were to ask them what they want, they would say, Oh, I want to be able to do whatever I want. You know, I want no rules. I want nobody watching me. But when it comes to being happy in a work environment, nothing could be further from the truth. Because when you work in an environment that breeds chaos, the employees feel uncertain, insecure, and unsafe. All right, they need a leader who's in control and who enforces the standards that have been set and who backs up what they say that they're going to do. All right, if they don't believe in you and feel secure. All right, your place is going to be far from magical as you can imagine. It won't be Disneyland. It's going to be like Toilet World or some other theme park that has low standards. Okay? So I know I went kind of long today, but I need you to understand that in order to build a truly remarkable and unforgettable culture, you have to make these things important. All right? You have to be 100% bought in. You can't put a poster of your mission statement or something that was created for the purpose of defining your culture up on the wall and think your job is done. I mean, if you have that poster of a mission statement and your values, that's great. I completely encourage you to put that up somewhere so people can see it and they're rem reminded of what your culture is all about. All right? But a poster doesn't replace your actions and your enforcement of these standards. All right, If I could tell you only to do one thing every single day to bring consistent culture to your restaurant, that would be to be energetic and enthusiastic. That's the most contagious action you can take. So be fun, be energetic. Be stern in enforcing your standards and lead by example. Okay? So I hope this helped you out some. I also hope you make millions of millions of dollars. I appreciate you being here. I am going to see you next time. I'm out.